and welcome to Gamer Latte. My name is Ellen and I hope you've got yourself a coffee. I hope you've settled in nice and comfy because we made it through another week. You know, cheers. Even if you dragged yourself, whether you sped through it or dragged yourself to the end, you made it through. And I feel like that's something we should be congratulating at the moment. <laughs> I'm taking victories where I can get them. I was around real people this month, um, completely COVID secure, but like new real people, which was quite intense. I was ill quite a few times um, and I played a lot of games. <laughs> I tried Valheim for the first time, um, although I like jumped into a friend server who was already pretty advanced, like they were already rebuilding their buildings in stone, which is pretty uh, high tech for a Viking. But yeah, playing it in a friend server who had already done quite well in the game and had some good gear and everything was um, maybe not the way to go. And I'm gonna try it again, going at my own pace because I think I need to learn some things. I was like running before I could walk. Um, and other than that, I played um, another Viking game. I played Assassin's Creed Valhalla. I started it when it first came out, but um, yeah, I started playing it on my PS4 and then I was lucky enough to get um, I was lucky enough to get a PS5. Um, I paid for it. I was, <laughs> I was lucky to get through in the queue is what I mean. But my saves didn't transfer over on like the Ubisoft cloud thing uh, to my PS5, so I just couldn't play it. I was gonna start again, because I thought, oh, I haven't really played that much of it. Turns out I played 28 hours, which is quite a long time to play a game and not really feel like you've scratched the surface or gotten into the story or met anyone yet but um, I am enjoying it. I'm definitely enjoying playing it on PS5 because it looks slick and I don't have to listen to like a really aggressive vacuum sound coming from my PlayStation as I play it. But yeah, aside from games that I've like dipped back into or tried a little bit of, there are some games that I have completed and spent like a good chunk of time with which I thought I would chat about in this video because I really like it when booktubers uh, do like what I read in a month and I feel like the vibe of this channel is kind of like gaming booktube. I think that's fair to say. So I thought I would try it myself. I would do what I have played in this month, the month, the year of our Lord, February 2021. <laughs> so when the past was around is on paper, like the perfect Ellen game. Um, it's a point and click puzzle game, but it's about love and loss and creativity. It's really pretty, it's got quite muted, earthy tones and a really endearing art style. Uh, a friend of mine was playing it almost at the same time as me and we had an interesting little chat about what exactly we thought it was about. I feel like it's relatively open to interpretation. She took a slightly different angle on it than I would um, and I love that about it. But as a game, um, as a puzzle game, I didn't love it. Um, not that there's anything wrong with having to look up um, guides for games. Guide writers are the unsung heroes of um, games journalism and God bless, thank you. I did look up how to solve some of the puzzles. What bothered me about it is that when I read the solution it wasn't like, oh, of course, it was like, how would I have known that? And I checked with my friend just to see if I was being a little bit dense and yeah she also struggled on the same ones as me so I feel like I don't know some of the puzzles weren't they didn't feel like you could come to a natural conclusion with them maybe you could get lucky or you would just google it there was also one puzzle towards the end of the game um, like almost right at the end that involved to solve it involved you using a controller mechanic that up until that point you hadn't used at all and unless I missed it, they didn't actually explain the mechanic, which feels like an odd way to go with a puzzle game, you know? I don't regret playing it at all, um, and I enjoyed it. It was a nice way to spend an afternoon, but I wouldn't recommend it, which is quite sad. I've had mini motorways downloaded on my phone for months. I got it from Apple Arcade, which is a subscription service I massively neglect given the a lot of the games are translated really well and ported really well onto your phone and there's some really good games on there, like I've played Florence about three times, um, <laughs> but other than that I've kind of neglected it for the most part. But Mini Motorways is brilliant, it feels like, it's almost like 
Sudoku if you don't want to deal with numbers. It's like problem solving. You basically just have to create roads that connect uh, buildings of the same colour. So there's a bunch of different coloured buildings. But you have to do it in the most kind of, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Like a streamlined, efficient way so that cars can get to where they need to go as quickly as possible and there's no pile-ups and stuff. And you start to unlock new things like traffic lights and motorways and bridges and things. But yeah, it's kind of problem solving. You don't have an unlimited number of road tiles. So sometimes you have to take some out and figure out where they can be best used. But yeah, if your mind's feeling quite busy and you maybe just want to quiet it by focusing on something, you know, Sudoku-esque, I highly recommend Mini Motorways. It's got a really nice simplistic art style. It's got really satisfying sound effects and yeah, a really easy to grasp premise, which is nice. So I play Stardew predominantly on PlayStation, although I have it on every console I own, <laughs> but um, it meant that I had to wait a little bit longer than PC players to play the 1.5 update, which came not too long ago, which brought with it, drumroll please, the ability to sit on chairs. <laughs> it also brought new cutscenes, a new character, a new area, um, a new job board outside Mayor Lewis's house. Um, you can move your bed. You can move the greenhouse, you can move the bin that you sell things in. <laughs> if you don't play Stargy, this is going to sound so incredibly mundane. But um, to us Stargy fans, this is like Christmas. Um, this is like many Christmases rolled into one. But I'm going off on a tangent now. It also brought with it uh, a new farm, which was the beach farm. I'm pretty, I'm a bit of a square when it comes to picking my farms. I either go for the really basic one or the foresty one. Um, but I play co-op with a friend, we play most weekends, and she suggested we try the beach farm, and I did, and I'm really glad she convinced me because it's really fun. It's like a really nice breath of fresh air into Stardew. Um, not that I can ever get bored with it, but it really changed up our gameplay. We had to think about how we planted things differently because you can't put sprinklers in the sand. So we were like painstakingly watering every single crop using all our energy by like 8 a.m. And yeah, it's just laid out in a kind of awkward but interesting way. I haven't actually seen the new character or got to the new area yet because we want to experience it, um, you know, authentically. So I don't know how you meet them or get to those areas yet. Please don't tell me. Please don't spoil it in the comments. But yeah, it's just been really great to try a new kind of way of approaching Stardew, I guess. And the 1.5 update is excellent. And Eric Barone, I hope I pronounced his name right, is just the MVP of game developers who look out for their fans and take on board um, criticism and give us new things. I just love him. So I am back on the Sims 4 hype train. I am riding that train from Cornwall to Scotland. That was, um, <laughs> I just tried to think of a long train journey. Um, yeah, I'm riding that midnight train, going anywhere. I don't know what I'm on about. What I was trying to say is um, that if you board the Sims train, um, you don't get off at like the third stop. You're there from start to finish. It's an all consuming, uh, game to play and it has consumed me once again because they recently released a paranormal pack and I can take or leave ghosts in The Sims but oh my gosh the furniture in that pack is beautiful I got it for the furniture and the clothes alone it has like a slight gothic edge and a slight retro vibe but not so gothic that it like turns your house into a haunted house there's lots of different swatches available as well. I also treated myself to the Island Living Pack, which I didn't have, and um, kind of got a beachy theme coming through here because much like uh, Stardew Valley, getting to play on a beach gave me a new lease of life. Moving my moving a family to a house on stilts that's uh, got a view of the sea from the bedroom and making them befriend dolphins was just a really fun way to spend my month. And I'm honestly surprised I played anything else because it really did take over a lot of my time and still is. I'm gonna play it after this. The last game that I played this month uh, was Gone Home and I'm not sure what I thought Gone Home was about. I don't know if I was just basing it off of the kind of um, purple kind of gothic uh, foreboding looking poster with the with the creepy house on the front but um yeah it gave me horror vibes uh, and you certainly don't shake that straight away because um, when you play the whole thing is set in a thunderstorm. Um, pathetic fallacy, the game. Uh, but you play as Katie who has returned home. I could have said gone home, that would have been satisfying, but no. Katie has returned home. 
and she's found that her family house is empty. I thought it was gonna be like all in murder mystery or something, I honestly don't know why, but it is not. Um, you certainly explore the house and unravel a mystery, but it isn't as sort of overtly dark as I thought it would be. I was pleasantly surprised. It's also about two hours long, so I completed it in one evening. And it has lots of little nice touches, like how you can move the furniture around, you can throw things about, which I absolutely did. Um, you can put cassettes in the cassette player. At one point, I like popped on some music and started throwing cups around the kitchen. Why the heck not, you know? I recommend it, and I'm really glad I played it. So that is what I have been playing this month, and I would really, really love to hear what you've been playing this month, if you have any recommendations for the rest of us. Um, and until next time, please give this video a like if you liked it, and subscribe, click the notification bell if you're feeling really fancy, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.